Hi guys, this is Gabriele from Nanoshan and today I'm here with John. Hi guys. We will deepen into the world of UI Rock T today to understand how to recognize and appreciate them. So keep watching. <laughs> In this video, we will look uh, together about what is actually Ui Rock Tea, how to recognize the leaves, and most importantly, to analyze, uh, we will analyze uh, the taste of the tea. And uh, if you're new to our channel, please uh, consider subscribing it by clicking on the button below this video. And uh, if you enjoy it any time while watching the video, please give us a thumbs up, it's very important for us. All right, so John, you have been uh, into tea uh, just for a few months or maybe a year. About a year. About so. a year, yeah. And what, uh, what fascinates you about tea? How everything started? Um, I love the flavor of green tea, but I've been drinking bad tea dust all my, all my life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a friend who's in the tea business, um, specifically Japanese tea, introduced me to it. And wow, what a difference. So. Uh, and I'm amazed by all the flavors, how one plant can produce just different types of flavor. Just, I mean, from green tea to um, black tea yeah. to the oolongs. Yeah. It's just... It's even even this one, out of these leaves, uh, instead of doing a ui yen cha, a very heavy uh, oolong tea, we could have done a green tea, actually, yeah. yeah. And in fact, in this region, you can certainly find also black tea. So, yeah, that's true. And... Um, um, Today, we are looking together in uh, Ui Rock Tea. It is a kind of tea that is very famous in China and uh, less famous in Europe uh, or in US, in the Western world, as long as you are not really into tea. It is so famous in China that it is sought after by many uh, people, even though they are not really into tea, just as a status symbol. The richer you are, the more fancy and expensive have to be a rock tea and this is also pushing all the prices up so for a tea where the prices are not necessarily related with quality you really want to understand it properly to not waste your money and the uh, uh, first aspects uh, that where you have to start with is learning how to recognize the leaves so you see it uh, here it is actually a very dark uh, very dark leaves and uh, this is comes from uh, the roasting. The leaves are uh, very brown. Mm, they don't have uh, many or they don't have a tall green tones in it, right? Looks very roasted. Looks very roasted, like more uh, a charred brown color. And uh, this is one of the of the key of the key aspect actually of of this tea. And uh, to understand a little bit more uh, into it, uh, did I mention actually to you the last year I was uh, not this year actually this spring. Sorry, there is a motorbike <laughs> passing by. Uh, I've been in China with uh, our customer. No. So, yeah, you should, you should have known that. Uh, and uh, uh, next year we will do it again. So maybe you would like to join. I would. Um, we we went to China this year for the first time with our customer. So instead of break, bringing the tea from the farm to your cup, we took you basically to the farm. And uh, one of the places we have visited was. Um, the Ui Mountain. So let me show you uh, some some picture about that. Let's see. Here we go. So like in this picture here, you see the um, a typical valley in the Ui Mountain. Uh, you see on the left hand side, uh, right side, you have these very very tall, uh, very dark leaves. It's almost the same color as the tea, actually. Yeah. And in the middle, you have uh, the tea garden, let's say, that is just a tiny narrow stretch in between the, the cliffs. And, uh, and here you see on the left is the whole group uh, we were traveling together with. And here you have another picture that shows you which is uh, how the nature is beautiful there. It is actually a UNESCO natural heritage site. It's very green, very mossy almost. Yeah, you feel like in, when, you, when you walk there, it's, like, it's very adventurous actually. <laughs> Beautiful. And um, and here you see a close out of one of those cliffs. So the color of the rocks, uh, in this case, it was even wet. It's very dark with some brown and purple tones to it. Very very characteristic. 
But um, what about actually starting brewing the tea and see how it tastes? So I'll put it in the guy one, cook the water, and then we'll be with you uh, in a minute. Okay, so I will give it a rinse. It is a Dahon Pao, which means it's a, a big red robe. And I can smell the aroma already. Mm. It's very nice, strong. And it is, um, Dahon Pao is uh, by far the most famous Wii uh, rock tea. Uh, it is so famous that actually most Chinese don't know the word rock tea, which is yan cha in Chinese, they know this kind of tea just by the name of his most famous representative, which is Da Hong Pao. Yeah. So you might uh, go in a tea shop in China and you ask uh, for, uh, uh, or someone tells you this is a Da Hong Pao, but actually it's not. It can be just uh, a general rock tea. It's mm, nice. So rock teas, there are uh, three different main aspects that characterize the taste of rock tea. And uh, now with this tip, we're going to look into one of them. I will steep it a bit longer because for this aspect is very important. And this is related to the, to the processing of the leaves. So I'll show you some more uh, picture to understand this a little bit better while the tea is steeping. You see here in this picture, we were actually harvesting uh, Fosho, which is another cultivar uh, that is uh, common in this area. And after the harvest, uh, we brought the tea in the factory and we laid it down um, on the ground to winter. The wittering process goes along for a few hours and then at the very end is already in the evening, you start processing the leaves. And uh, in this picture here, you see the leaves that are on these bamboos uh, mats for uh, oxidizing. They are uh, bruised one against each other for a while, then I laid down here for oxidizing, and they are bruised again. And they're not shaded, or they are shaded? Here they are in, indoor, so indoor. it is completely shaded, yeah. And in this last picture you see uh, a roasting room. This guy here was explaining to us uh, the whole process. It was extremely hot, like uh, almost 50 degrees uh, C, and not all of us could stay there the whole time. It's like, like a Turkish bath. And he's in a long sleeve shirt and long sleeve pants. Yes, yes. And, uh, and he was not pants. sweating and I was completely wet. And, um, and you see on the background in the, in the concrete wall there are holes and inside that there are cones made of uh, um, char. Charcoal. 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 And uh, each hole has charcoal with a different temperature. And then they would take the basket that you see here on the bottom uh, left and put them on the hole. To, um, to roast and will be stay there for uh, um, several hours. This is the traditional ways. Nowadays, most of the producers use electric um, oven to, to roast the tea. And uh, this process is uh, quite long. It can take us uh, um, several hours, even like 10, 8, 12 hours, something like that. Then the leaves are put apart and uh, they are uh, um, let, uh, how to say, let's say, relaxing maybe for about a month and then they are roasted again. And this process can be done uh, two times, three times until you get really this very dark red color that you see here, hopefully. So let's taste the tea. Mm. You taste how strong it is. Mm. Yeah, it's but it's very sweet too. I mean, yeah, at the same time, yeah, that's true. It is. You have this this roasting aroma actually. That is the first aspect I want to talk about. Is very present, and if you are used to drink very delicate tea, you mentioned before actually green tea. Mm -hmm. um, you are not used to this uh, strength and power, and this would certainly be the first thing you notice uh, when you taste the rock tea. Didn't you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> It's like uh, if you give uh, someone that have never drunk uh, coffee, you give him a coffee and you, take, you ask him how does it taste, he would tell you bitter. 
it, is, it cannot appreciate the, the taste of the coffee itself because this roastiness is just so strong. Sorry, there is just a plane flying over our head. We're very close to the airport here, we cannot avoid that. Mm. So the, the roasting comes from the processing. We've seen in the picture before, it is just the last step of the processing. But there are other aspects that are important. I will cook some, the water. There are some other aspects that are important for the, the taste of uh, rock tea. One is uh, the um, environment, the terroir, like the French uh, uh, would say, that we've seen some picture in the, uh, in the photos before. And another aspect is uh, the taste of the leaves themselves. Yeah, the intrinsic aroma of the leaves. So we start now, after having discussed in the, uh, the roasting, we continue with uh, the second aspect that I would like to talk about. The second aspect is uh, what I would define as uh, a mineral texture of the tea liquor. It's a concept that is a little bit difficult to grasp because it's not say, oh look, this is floral or this is roasted, this is kind of taste profile that we are used to mm -hmm. recognize. But here is more about uh, a taste that comes from the rocks that are around uh, the bushes. Uh, you've seen these high cliffs that uh, they are very close to, get, uh, to each other and uh, the, the soil in between is very um, thin. So it's very rich in uh, minerals that influence, of course, the taste of the leaves themselves. And by mineral, I mean is like, I like to associate it like uh, licking a stone. Uh, I don't know if you have ever licked a stone. <laughs> I have not licked a stone. Well, maybe what about a salt stone? So that's... But yeah, it's a very, very different taste. I it's a very different taste. Yeah, yeah. Is uh, but at least even if you haven't licked the stone, just think about it and gives you this this mineral taste. It is a crispy um, background taste. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of the tea that you have to search a little bit uh, behind the roasting. It's like when you uh, drink coffee again uh, and you want to find out how the coffee tastes. You have to go behind the bitterness, and also here you have to go behind the roasting. I brew it a bit lighter. Hopefully this will help uh, searching for the mineral. And you see the leaves, as I was saying, they are roll over the length. And even after two steepings, they are not uh, uh, really uh, opening up. So you can get quite a quite a few steepings out of this tea. Mm. Definitely. I have here about um, four grams of leaves uh, and we could steep it probably for uh, six times. Okay. Yeah. Also, people say that uh, uh, when you have roasted the uh, yencha, you should wait two to three years for the roasting to fade out uh, until the taste really is uh, perfect and is at its best. So this shows also that uh, there is the tendency of uh, waiting so that the roasting is no more so present and you are able to appreciate the taste of the leaf itself. Okay. Can you kind of feel what I mean with mineral? I can. Yeah, are you I'm, sure or I, just I think, pretending? No, to? I think I can. It's... I don't know how to describe it. If, when I was young and you... You did. You were dumb, and you licked um, a frozen pole. It's like yeah, kind of that, that kind of taste. Yeah, it has. Uh, so it is. Um, if it would have only the roasting taste and only the intrinsic aroma of the leaves, the tea would be a little bit flatter than it is here. But here you have these additional, uh, um, yeah, background taste and that adds complexity to it. And this is what makes this tea so special. And those cliffs that I showed you before can be found actually only in Uishan. And that's why this tea, to be authentic and really taste as it should, have to come from that place. Unfortunately, of course, as everything in China, when it is about money, they produce this similar tea everywhere else in China, and then they sell it pretending it is the original one. 
Um, and it won't have the complexity. It, it won't have that complexity. The roasting is no problem. And of course, what they do, they even over roast it. And then when it is over roasted, it's like a, a burned mm. taste that is, a, is an off taste that you don't. Yeah, this is definitely not burned. It's very subtle. Yeah. In the roasting. And the third aspect that we just mentioned before is actually the leaves aroma. So this is something that is typical of the cultivar of the tea plant that we are using. And in this case, we said we are drinking a Dahon Pao, but there are many, many other cultivars. There are, I don't know, dozens and dozens of cultivars in this area. And what do you say about this tea for you? Is it more, um, let's say, floral or fruity? Uh, for me, mm -hmm. fruity, for sure. Mm. Yeah. I'm I, I would say the same. For me, it's also this, this tea is a little bit more uh, fruity. I'm sure that someone could also taste some floral notes to mm -hmm. it, but between the two, the fruit is dominant. Yeah. yeah, I would agree. Yeah. And it's not only about floral and fruity. There are other aspects that come into play for other cultivar. It can be um, spicy, it can be nutty, uh, sometimes it can even be woody. Yeah. And uh, but this is maybe a topic for another uh, for another video where we will uh, look more into uh, comparing different yencha, different ui rock teas with each other. Yeah. So um, summarizing what we have said today, we have explained how to recognize the leaves. You have this brown charred color where the leaves are rolled over their length in uh, um, not too uh, tightly, kind of loose. And uh, then we have uh, discussed the taste aspects of rock tea. For really understanding rock tea, you have to practice recognizing three different aspects. We have the roasting. We have the roasting, that is the most uh, obvious one. We have uh, the mineral texture, and then we have the intrinsic aroma of the leaves. So try yourself, practice, drink the tea. We have a flight that is coming over our head, so we will close this video now before it gets too loud. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, if you have enjoyed watching our video, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And uh, if it is uh, uh, the first time you are here and you're new to our channel, please uh, go ahead and subscribe, clicking that button. It is very important for us, and it's also very important for you, because the more subscribers we get, the more videos will come your way. Thank you very much. Enjoy your free moment and uh, see you next time. Bye bye. And why is his cup bigger than mine? That is the big This question. is a topic for the next video. <laughs> <laughs> bye.